Bronchiolitis obliterans, Wikipedia article audio. Bronchiolitis obliterans, informally known as popcorn lung, is a disease that results in obstruction of the smallest airways of the lungs due to inflammation. Symptoms include a dry cough, shortness of breath, wheezing, and feeling tired. These symptoms generally get worse over weeks to months. It is not related to organizing pneumonia. Causes include breathing in toxic fumes, respiratory infections, connective tissue disorder, or following a bone marrow or heart lung transplant. Symptoms may not occur until 2 to 8 weeks following toxic exposure or infection. The underlying mechanism involves inflammation that results in scar tissue formation. Diagnosis is by CT scan, pulmonary function tests, or lung biopsy. A chest X-ray is often normal. Signs and Symptoms Cause While the disease is not reversible treatments can slow further worsening. This may include the use of corticosteroids or immunosuppressive medication. A lung transplant may be tried. Outcomes are often poor with most people dying in months to years. Bronchiolitis obliterans is rare in the general population. It affects about 75% of people by 10 years following a lung transplant and up to 10% of people who have received a bone marrow transplant from someone else. The condition was first clearly described in 1981. Prior descriptions occurred as early as 1956. Bronchiolitis obliterans is a lung disease characterized by fixed airway obstruction. Inflammation and scarring occur in the airways of the lung, resulting in severe shortness of breath and dry cough. FEV1 should be above 80% of predicted values to be considered normal. Bronchiolitis obliterans reduces this to between 16% and 21%. Symptoms include dry cough, shortness of breath and wheezing. Industrial inhalants The symptoms can start gradually, or severe symptoms can occur suddenly. Bronchiolitis obliterans has many possible causes, including collagen vascular disease, transplant rejection in organ transplant patients, viral infection, Stevens-Johnson syndrome, pneumocystis pneumonia, drug reaction, aspiration, and complications of prematurity, and exposure to toxic fumes, including diacetyl, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, ammonia, chlorine, thionyl chloride, methyl isocyanate, hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen bromide, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen sulfide, phosgene, polyamide, amine dyes, mustard gas and ozone. It can also be present in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Certain orally administrated emergency medications, such as activated charcoal, have been known to cause it when aspirated. The ingestion of large doses of papaverine in the vegetable Soropus androgynous has caused it. Additionally, the disorder may be idiopathic. Diacetyl there are many industrial inhalants that are known to cause various types of bronchiolitis, including bronchiolitis obliterans. Industrial workers who have presented with bronchiolitis. Bronchiolitis obliterans may be caused by inhalation of airborne diacetyl, a chemical used to produce the artificial butter flavoring in many foods such as candy and microwave popcorn and occurring naturally in wines. This first came to public attention when eight former employees of the Gilster Mary Lee popcorn plant in Jasper, Missouri, developed bronchiolitis obliterans. In 2000, 
the Missouri Department of Health called in the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health to make a determination of the cause, and to recommend safety measures. After surveying the plant and each patient's medical history, Niash recommended respiratory protection for all workers in microwave popcorn production. Due to this event, bronchiolitis obliterans began to be referred to in the popular media as popcorn lung or popcorn workers lung. It is also referred to as flavorings related lung disease. Burn pits Bronchiolitis obliterans caused by diacetyl inhalation begins with a cough, wheezing and dyspnea, and usually progresses slowly, but severe symptoms can develop without warning. Other symptoms that appear in some workers include fever, weight loss, and night sweats. Symptoms do not change when workers are away from the workplace. CT images show bronchial wall thickening and trapped air. Non-smokers may be at higher risk for this form of bronchiolitis obliterans. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration recommended that diacetyl manufacturing companies regularly sample air in work environments, provide air purifying respirators, and engage in medical surveillance of at-risk workers. In 2011, National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health proposed a recommended short-term exposure limit of 25 parts per billion and a time-weighted average exposure of 5 ppb. Diagnosis In 2007 a heavy consumer of microwaved popcorn was diagnosed by a doctor in Denver with popcorn lung, the first known case involving a consumer. On January 16, 2008, it was announced that Wayne Watson, a Denver man who developed popcorn lung after inhaling fumes from microwaved popcorn, was suing the Kroger grocery store chain and its affiliates. In the lawsuit, filed in U.S. District Court, Watson's attorney claimed that the companies failed to warn that preparing microwave popcorn in a microwave oven as intended and smelling the buttery aroma could expose the consumer to an inhalation hazard and a risk of lung injury. On September 19, 2012 a jury in U.S. District Court in Denver awarded $2.3 million in actual damages and $5 million in punitive damages to Watson. Defendants included Gilster Mary Lee, the manufacturer, Kroger, and Kroger's subsidiary Dillon's, owners of King Supers and City Market, a Colorado regional supermarket chain. Prevention On August 27, 2007, Weaver Popcorn Company of Indianapolis promised to replace the diacetyl butter flavor ingredient in Pop Weaver Popcorn with another flavoring. In September 2007, Dr. Cecile Rose, pulmonary specialist at Denver's National Jewish Health Medical and Research Center, warned federal agencies that consumers, not just flavoring or food factory workers, may be in danger of contracting bronchiolitis obliterans. David Michaels, of the George Washington University School of Public Health, first published Rose's warning letter on his blog. Treatment On September 4, 2007, the flavor and extract manufacturers recommended reduction of diacetyl in butter-like flavorings. The next day ConAgra Foods announced that it would soon remove diacetyl from its popcorn products. Diacetyl is approved by the Food and Drug Administration as a safe flavor ingredient, but there is evidence to suggest that inhalation in large amounts is dangerous. There are currently no warnings from federal regulators about diacetyl. Diacetyl is found in the vapor created by some electronic cigarette flavors. A niche peer-reviewed publication documents that, in laboratory studies, acute inhalation exposures to acetylpropionyl, 
one of the compounds with a buttery flavor and slash or smell put forward as a safer alternative to diacetyl, cause airway epithelial damage that is as harmful as diacetyl. A new form of constrictive bronchiolitis is starting to present in Iraq and Afghanistan veterans. It has been attributed to veterans being exposed to trash burn pits. Veterans present with shortness of breath and other asthma-like symptoms. The only way to diagnose this condition is by doing a lung biopsy as chest x-rays and CT scans come back as normal. The government still denies that there is any correlation between burn pits and health problems but the government has started an airborne hazards and open burn pit registry to begin tracking the health of veterans who were exposed to burn pits to see if there is a connection. Bronchiolitis obliterans is often misdiagnosed as asthma, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, or pneumonia. Several tests are often needed to correctly diagnose bronchiolitis obliterans, including chest X-rays, diffusing capacity of the lung tests, spirometry, lung volume tests, high-resolution CT, and lung biopsy. Diffusing capacity of the lung tests are usually normal. People with early-stage BOW are more likely to have normal DLCO. Spirometry tests usually show fixed airway obstructions and sometimes restriction, where the lungs can't expand fully. Lung volume tests may show hyperinflation. HRCT can also show air trapping when the person being scanned breathes out completely, it can also show thickening in the airway and haziness in the lungs. Transthoracic lung biopsies are preferable for diagnosis of constrictive bow compared to transbronchial biopsies, regardless of the type of biopsy, a diagnosis may only be achieved by examination of multiple samples. Nylon flock workers, workers who spray prints onto textiles with polyamidamine dyes, battery workers who are exposed to thionyl chloride fumes workers at plants that use or manufacture flavorings, e.g. diacetyl butter-like flavoring. Flavorings-related lung disease can be prevented with the use of engineering controls, personal protective equipment, monitoring of potentially affected workers, worker education, and by not using lung disease-causing flavorings. This disease is irreversible and severe cases often require a lung transplant. Transplant recipients are at risk for redeveloping the disease, as bronchiolitis obliterans is a common complication of chronic rejection. Evaluation of interventions to prevent bronchiolitis obliterans relies on early detection of abnormal spirometry results or unusual decreases in repeated measurements. King M.S., Eisenberg R., Newman J.H., E.T.A.L. Constrictive bronchiolitis in soldiers returning from Iraq and Afghanistan. N. English J. Med 365, 222. 30 doi, 101056 slash NEJMOA 1101388. PMC 329. 6566. PMID 21774710, Brown J.A. Bronchiolitis obliterans. Has map information on hazardous chemicals and occupational diseases. National Institutes of Health, Alert, Preventing Lung Disease in Workers Who Make or Use Flavorings. National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. 2004, Flavorings-Related Lung Disease National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health A multi-center study has shown the combination of inhaled fluticasone propionate, oral montelukast, and oral azithromycin may be able to stabilize the disease and slow disease progression. This has only been studied in patients who previously underwent hematopoietic stem cell transplantation.